Two days after we got married, Carla suggested we sell everything, buy a boat and set sail. A year later we did just that. In the Canaries, we picked up our naked sailor, Dobby. This is our adventure. So week 31, guys. Yeah. yeah, here we are. And uh, closer and closer to the end, that's the most in best thing about it all together. Yeah, we had a great week last week and we are hoping to have the same this week. Apart from that it's going to be just a three day week. Yes, because we're going very exciting actually and you'll be able to see some extra videos. We'll still do a normal video about the barge, but we're also going to include in the next couple of weeks uh, some videos about sailing in Holland. Yes, because we were invited to go for a launch of this new brand of catamarans called Van Catamarans. They are absolutely amazing, beautiful. Yes. So we're going to go to the presentation and to the yeah. sail. Go for a sail trip. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, so fantastic. So it's going to be amazing. <laughs> so last week was absolutely a brilliant week, actually. And in fact, we did manage to uh, line up the engine with the prop shaft and um, put the engine in uh, by bolting it down rather in the right place. And so well, we didn't include that in last week's video. So we're going to include that in this week's video. Mm -hmm. So we're going to crack on with that now. Yeah. And then we're going to finish the job and also put in a lot more hoses and move on to doing the... Um, the heater unit yeah. which we haven't finished we haven't really started so that's our next task yeah that's great so this is a little bit more exciting today we're going to actually uh, bolt up together the engine and the prop shaft so we have to make sure that the two are perfectly aligned and there's no movement like this or this way um, in order to do that though the prop shaft is around about uh, 10 centimeters three and a half inches too long and so we need to work out the length uh, just big enough so that if we wanted to put an anode on the prop shaft when it sticks out, it needs to stick out about three fingers width uh, out of the stern tube. Uh, so we're going to do that first. We can get the anode grinder out and cut it off and then um, we're going to try and mate it up and then bolt the engine down. Are we cutting on this side or on the other side? This side. Definitely. Definitely this side. Okay, I have to push it from the uh, outside. From the outside. Yeah. We're going to cut about three centimeters or about an inch off here and I'm using this bit of paper to get it square. Not that it's been cut square, it certainly hasn't. But I want to get it as square as I can. Imagine how big the shaft must have been on the Titanic. Oh, it's hot. There it goes. It's, it's quite much nice, better isn't than it? the one before. Yeah, this one was a bit like somebody just. Anyway, there we go. I'll just get a file and just take the edges off. This is where it goes through the stuffing box and I just want to make sure it goes through easily because it was all a bit of a struggle and of course the stuffing box will be filled with grease. feeling is that it's a slightly bigger gap there and around this side. Well, it does actually look quite good. I think I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to give it a go. I'm having to make up an extension to get this drill bit down into the bottom of the engine. So I've got all these uh, things in here. And uh, here we go.
big struggle here. This is the engine mounts. But in the middle of this beam is uh, the vertical of the beam. And uh, the engine mounts fit right over the top of the vertical of the beam. So we're having to turn them sideways. And it's uh, all just turning to be a bit tricky to get the nuts on. And that's it, the engine's bolted in. So we still got the water to uh, do and the control cables, etc. But that's for another day. So this is quite different actually the way the exhaust system's been done on this boat because it's what we call it's got a, a dry uh, exhaust system. So the only thing comes out of the exhaust pipe is the hot gases and the water which normally comes in from the river and then flows back out through the exhaust is actually just going round in a circle it's enclosed and the panel underneath me here is a, a double skin lining on the hull and the water comes in behind me in the top corner uh, the hot water and it passes through here and inside there there's some baffles to slow the movement down and it comes back out through this hose and back into the pump and into the engine. Now there's a couple of advantages of this system although personally I wouldn't have chosen it I'd just do a normal uh, wet exhaust. Uh, one is apparently it's quieter it has what it calls a hospital uh, silencer which is supposed to be absolutely incredibly uh, makes the engine very quiet so that's one advantage another advantage is that you don't get all the muck from the river all the debris coming up and blocking the system up because it's actually an enclosed system so there's no uh, muck coming in whatsoever um, so in a hole and also you can put antifreeze in it so uh, that's another uh, advantage so that uh, over the winter period this whole thing is sealed uh, antifreeze and if you're using a boat in the winter you don't have a problem with the uh, river water freezing in the engine or anything like that so all in all it probably is uh, a, a good thing I'm really fascinated to try it um, I hope it works. I hope they've all the calculations uh, that have been done by Vetus uh, when the boat was being built are correct. So it's really quite exciting. So these are the brackets for the hospital um, silencer. Basically, this goes on the wall and then the silencer sits here and it's got a couple of metal straps coming over. I'm really grateful to a friend of mine, Lee, from uh, DMS, uh, stainless steel fabrication company and laser cutting company in Maidenhead in Berkshire, who, who's made these for me. And uh, they're an absolutely tremendous job. Absolutely brilliant, so thank you very much. Go into the hole again. Yep, back in. <coughs> I like a horse. That's a young stallion. This one doesn't want to go in. <coughs> it's a bit of a complicated system because I have to uh, put this board on. Okay. So the silence is going to sit on there, some straps around it, and then the hose comes down and goes into there. Well, it's kind of in here, um, but what we're having to do is to take this bracket off because of this pipe that comes out here and uh, slide it across and then put the bracket back on. But we can't do that until we've had some special fittings made, which somebody's making uh, for the exhaust pipe that goes out to the side of the hull, which is all a bit difficult. Um, traditionally, these exhaust pipes are steel, but we've actually found some uh, very, very special pipe 
which goes up to 750 degrees C from a company. Look and like a spacious yeah, pipe. Yeah, it really is something special. And uh, they say that they will work perfectly well for this. It's flexible, so we'll um, be whacking that one. <coughs> but they're making us some special clips to seal it up. Yay! All the YouTubers like a big a coffee on video, don't they? Absolutely. That's a nice cup of coffee. See? And then they talk about the coffee for about 10 minutes. I know. <laughs> ah, coffee. <laughs> That's the drink of the day. So, anyways, we've got some really good news. Yeah. Carla has sold the camper. Yeah, and sold. It's been sold. And you won't believe that, but it's going to America. Great US of A. Wow. <laughs> How did we do that? That's the power of Facebook. Yeah, marketplace. Absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah. I mean, we sold the, uh, the catamaran on Facebook, uh, which is unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, now we sold the camper on Facebook. So we're going to be selling the barge on, on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so Simon has given me an impossible mission. Running this cable from there to the, from the um, electric uh, cupboard, whatever, <laughs> to the power locker. How am I going to do that? Okay, job done. Uh, it was quite a challenge to fix the cable at some point because it's uh, all covered, but uh, I managed to do it. And uh, so now it's here, it's going to be the next challenge for Simon to try to find a way to make a hole to go into the bow locker. So you're obviously going to have to find a way to do it, but um, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it. <laughs> So my next job today is to put this in, which is the exhaust pipe for the uh, heater. And uh, unfortunately I've got a very small area between the holding tank and the bulkhead to put it in and there's already a venting tube in there uh, for the uh, holding tank. But um, I'm going to put it in a bit lower down and uh, go with that I think. Um, so it won't be on the blue part of the hull, it'll actually be on the uh, grey part of the hull, which is still uh, quite a long way out of the water. Okay, that's good. All these horrible stains on here have been left by the yard actually when they put in this vent here. They got all their muck over the boat and uh, I'm gonna have to clean it all off. Slightly disappointing really, to be honest. Right, here goes. Hey, here we go. So we'll go in like that. So this is the exhaust pipe and uh, this is a silencer. Now this is a, a marine silencer and you can tell because it's been welded. You get some of these with the cheaper Chinese uh, kits and there's nothing wrong with them at all but they're not suitable for a marine environment where they're, if a gas escapes it collects in the bottom of the boat. So this is a proper marine one, it's a genuine one and uh, we're going to put that on there with some uh, what I call sort of cement really to uh, seal it. Okay, so this is going to go on the side of the hull. This is going to get lagged. I've got to get the length right, cut it. And also it has to go up in a, a swan neck like that so there's any water doesn't uh, feed back into the boiler. So this is a heat resistant fiberglass 
mat, which um, I'm putting round here, so that uh, for a start, if you put your hand on it, you wouldn't burn your hand if it's that hot. But also because it uh, needs to protect itself against, or well, it needs uh, pipes and stuff like that close by, need to be protected from it. Yeah, I should have put this one, this side of this, although it's tied up there, it's alright. It's good isn't it? I've got a slight kink in it, in the pipe here, but I need to, this is a bit long, I need to shorten it I think. Apart from that, I think we're good. So this is the uh, control wires for the uh, Warbesto heater unit. And uh, to be honest, I'm just completely confused. Well, I'm not surprised, it looks very complicated. So this end goes, says it goes on the heater, and there's two different connectors. 